Close your eyes and watch your breath. Get the mind grounded in the present moment. Have a sense of your awareness filling the whole body. The breath fills the whole body. We do this both so that we can get the mind into a place where it feels at home. That in and of itself is a good thing. But it's also good when you stop to think about your life. Try to put it in a space like this. So that you'll be able to recognize any thoughts that are off kilter. Any thoughts that are twisted, leaning in the wrong directions. As the Buddha said, our minds tend to lead either to the things we like, or to our hatreds, or to our delusions, or to our fears. And when we're leaning like this, it's hard to do the right thing, because all your actions start to lean, your words start to lean. Try to get the mind so it's set upright, solidly established. This is that time of year when you look back on the past year and look ahead to the future year. And there are a lot of things I'm sure that we can look back on. One of the big lessons is there are a lot of things that happen in the world that you have no control over. Nobody wanted the pandemic, but here it is. But what you should look back on is, what did you do with the situations? What good did you get out of them? Good for the mind. When there were some people who took advantage of the situation to make a lot of money while other people were starving, which may be for their good in the short term, but not, certainly not in the long term. What long-term good did you develop? And what areas are you still lacking in? Where are you still leaning in the wrong directions? Make up your mind that you're going to straighten things out. Because again, with the coming year, there are going to be a lot of things that are beyond our control. So focus on things that you can get under your control. And it turns out there's quite a lot. In fact, the most important things in life are the ones that you can gain control over, if you want to. The problem is that we just let things slide for the most part. We don't take advantage of the opportunities when they come. So remind yourself that time is short. Even if you live for a hundred years, it's still short. You can't gather up all those hundred years and take them with you. As you get toward the end of life, time just seems very, very short. And, the, and all that long time that you have been alive is gone. What you have left is the good and bad things you've done. So look at what you have in your pile of possessions. Make sure they're good things. And you have that choice. You have that power. That is one of the areas where you can be responsible and you can make a difference. So you look back on the areas where you still have some weaknesses and say, okay, this coming year I'm going to try to make up for those. That's a good use of this convention that we have, that the year begins at this time of the year. In other cultures, it begins in other months. But here we've got this New Year, so take advantage of the convention. See what you can do to make sure that the next year is a year that's really good. As the Buddha said, what makes a day auspicious is not the stars or not things that happen to you, it's the things you choose to do. Follow your duties, he said, and that's your duties with regard to the Four Noble Truths, to comprehend suffering, so you can abandon its cause. Develop the path to its cessation so you can realize its cessation. That's very auspicious. That's something we can all do. So when you take time to stop and reflect, get your mind in a good position first. So those reflections come out right in line with what the Buddha said is true. What the Buddha discovered is true. In the beginning, we take that on conviction that what he discovered as true really is true. Firm in the conviction that someday we'll see it for ourselves.